Hi everyone and welcome to Football Therapist for a new video that should give a bit more sense to one of the playlists of my channel. The one about positional play uh, as I have already published two videos about game phases that can be associated with uh, positional play without really uh, defining what it is. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do now before looking at the different positional play concepts that I know so far. So I ask for your indulgence as this is a subject that is still being theorized and uh, debated today. So let's start by trying to give a definition because there are different uh, definitions. So I, I tried to take uh, something from all uh, the best ones to tell you now that I would say positional play is the style, uh, the way of playing that aims to uh, maximize the possible superiority of the team in question over its opponent through a rational occupation of space may seem like uh, gibberish at first glance, but it will become much clearer as the video uh, goes on, you'll see. In fact, the term uh, position refers here not only to where the players are located on the field, but also to the way they are located, uh, the position of the body in space. In English, uh, the word position has indeed this double meaning, but this is not uh, really the case in Spanish since, as Juan Manuel Lillo uh, explains, it is rather the, ter uh, the term ubicación uh, that should be chosen, which is why you can find the two nomenclatures uh, for some years now. So theoretically, uh, we can very well talk about the team's positional play during its off-the-ball phases, but it's not really done anymore because any good low, middle or high block pressing or counter-pressing can be rational occupations of space, whereas with the ball, the objective is clear behind this rational uh, occupation of space, to keep the ball in order to score a goal and not uh, just to, to keep it. Positional play is precisely not possession play or tiki tack as it, as it is often uh, mistakenly called, uh, which is why Guardiola said uh, he hates tiki taka because every pass must have uh, an intention and uh, that intention must not obviously... Uh, um, must obviously not be to, to create or, or continue a, a rhythmic uh, tic-tac noise. Having the ball is not a goal itself, uh, in fact, it, it's, the, it's the way to, to score goals, but that doesn't mean neglecting the, the opponent and the risks of losing the, the ball uh, neither, which, which is why when in possession, teams that are associated with positional play tend to build a sort of pyramid, as shown here, because we have defenders who are close enough to each other uh, to avoid making long passes in these areas that would allow the, the opponent to recover several balls by anticipating these build-ups. And we also have this amplitude uh, higher up uh, the field to stretch the, the line of uh, opponent defenders. Because if the latter refuse to stretch uh, uh, to, to stretch out, the, the winger can easily uh, receive the ball, so there's progression. And if they do want to prevent this pass by spreading out a little more, there's more space in the middle for the players um, on the inside. Hence the concept of not having a teammate in the same lane, uh, on the same vertical line. Here, the amplitude uh, that Sterling gives will allow uh, Zinchenko to become a passing option as soon as the player between the two ex-citizens will prepare himself to intercept a possible uh, pass to the English winger. And if this were to happen, it could also be partly due to the fact that in order to run at Sterling, the opponent in question would not only move to the opposite side of Zinchenko, but also, but also to the back, uh, while uh, the Ukrainian is rather in front of him. So why there is also the, the concept of, no, uh, of not having a, a teammate at the same height, uh, although like for its false twin, uh, if I can say, this concept should be considered in hindsight, uh, because even though it's in fact so for players close to the ball, it is of course uh, sometimes possible to let the ball through uh, to the players uh, to the player um, to a player who would be further uh, back on the same uh, passing line. But if the amplitude is generally rather high up the pitch, uh, high up on the on the field um, uh, on the pitch, because the the idea behind this switch is to progress at least first 
um, at least first through the center because you have more passing options. Uh, you can more easily play to the left or to the right. Where from one side, joining the other means longer passes. So it is practically impossible to surprise the, the opponent with deep passes since um, uh, since they normally end up being intercepted because uh, defenders have enough time to. However, uh, switching sides and generally uh, playing to a winger can be the quickest route uh, to goal, even if many believe that it is always through the center, as it may be that the most difference a team makes uh, is on the wings. In my video on Chavis Balsa from the first weeks, we saw three ways to favor um, um, one on one superiority on, on the flanks when you have a, a good dribbler. So uh, there's no reason to avoid the, this kind of means if you have it, as it would go against the nature of, of the game, which is to try to take advantage of the, the different types of superiority or, uh, or advantage possible. The Spanish literature uh, recognizes four of them with technical or qualitative, uh, numerical, positional and socio-effective superiority. But I think we could also talk about a dynamic uh, advantage. I'll probably do a, a video one day on these five concepts. But you should know that there's already a, a lot to learn on uh, the internet. Anyway, all that to say that this rational occupation of space which is what we are looking um, uh, for when we, we have positional play uh, as our uh, objective, is even more uh, rational when we take into account who our players or teammates are. So in fact, uh, there's not only one system that allows this kind of football, uh, all can do it, but some are more demanding than others. For example, Mourinho said that with the 4-3-3, there, there's a perfectly balanced uh, occupation of space, whereas with the 4-4-2 uh, tight diamond, you have to think a lot more because the, the pitch is occupied in an irrational way. And in particular, he says that in this configuration, if the, the fullbacks go deep, um, you need more adjustments to compensate for, for that defensively. And it's the same when players uh, from the diamond move to the wings. But even if some systems are more complex to master than others, positional, game, uh, positional play is always synonymous with positional rigor, with, with accuracy at this level, Notably, notably with, the concept, uh, with the concept of distances of relation, which is not only preventive in case uh, of, a, of ball losses, uh, because the, this idea stands we should uh, actually be at a certain distance from our teammates, depending on who they are and where the ball is. Uh, an example of this is Messi, who, after some time playing in the center under Guardiola, tended to have an opponent directly uh, in his back when he received the ball, so that he couldn't turn around. Um, and so, de depending on, um, on the situation, the solution was to have several teammates very close to Messi to reduce the distance and therefore the passing time. And so, if you're positioned uh, correctly, it's better not to move in certain situations because to do so would mean not respecting your your function your function anymore. Henri said that in Barcelona you you learn to wait for the ball rather than to drop back and ask for for it because those few meters could mean you won't break an opponent's line uh, anymore, for example. But keeping your position can also make sense after making a pass if your marker goes somewhere else or if you want him to, to stay with you so that he doesn't defend a, a teammate with, with a better position. We saw the toco y me voy, I touch and I move in my analysis of Argentina and well, sometimes you, uh, you also have to, to touch and, and, and stay uh, toco y me quedo. Let's move on to something more concrete, as animations are needed this time so that you can fully understand uh, the concepts that, that follow. The first of these is the Freeman, as there is usually uh, the possibility to, uh, of having uh, a numerical superiority and therefore having a, a Freeman. Indeed, many teams, when they don't have the ball, make sure they have one more uh, player than their opponent at the height of their uh, line of defenders. And if this is not the case anymore, um, uh, and everyone defends a, a specific player, uh, mark, man marking, there's always uh, the possibility to have a, uh, a numerical superiority by using the goalkeeper, uh, as, as long as one of the 10 field players jumps out uh, on him. 
So first, the team has to be ready to offer pass, uh, passing options if, if there is pressure or if pressure is going to come since you will maybe have to attract it with the numerous uh, means that exist. The first being a, a rather slow pass that could make um, uh, an opponent sink for a moment that the goalkeeper will come too late when in fact he won't so that the opponent is going to leave his player and then hesitate, uh, perhaps giving the goalkeeper time to pass to the player he has to mark. If this is not enough and you need to attract the player out even more, waiting for the ball to come to you and making a, a pausa, a break, especially by controlling it with the sole of the foot, which Roberto de Zerbi recommends, is a good way too, uh, because it gives uh, the impression of being carefree and therefore you can be underestimated. The last resort is called conducción in Spanish, driving forward with the ball um, uh, until an, an opponent comes out. And to make this kind of magnetization stronger, uh, I advise the ball carrier to lower his head uh, until he, he reaches a limit of reduction of his field of vision that he must know in order to still be able to perceive uh, his environment. The opposing player might fall, in, might fall into the trap and arri arrive at full speed, meaning more time would be needed for him to turn around, especially if the keeper gives the ball away at the last, at the very last moment, because the closer the presser is, uh, the further away he will be from the receiver usually. And should the free man still be in the shadow of the opponent when the pass is about to be played? The alternative is called the third man secret, um, since through another player the free man can be found and is therefore also the third man uh, in this combination. That's why we, as we associate uh, positional play with the formation of triangles uh, around the ball carrier, but what is decisive is how these triangles are, not the fact that they are triangles, because you can take any team and connect its players in such a way that they are triangles without it being positional play anyway. Sometimes it's also possible to extend this third man uh, concept to the fourth man uh, concept uh, as I demonstrated in my video on Chavis Barca, but this implies that you're already involved in the game before the third man gets the ball. And that's what I would like to talk about now, the, the idea that each player has a role at all times, even when, the, when we have the ball on the other side. After the third man combination, uh, let's imagine that, the, that this opponent uh, jumps out onto the ball carrier preventing uh, the pass to the fullback. Since, since it's now impossible to play towards the next free man because in, he's in the shadow of the presser, thus a new conducción, and there comes precisely the concept of uh, viajar juntos, uh, traveling together, which thus requires the, the players to always form a, a group to a unity to, to progress, notably uh, here to prevent a ball loss since uh, the central defender left his position. And this concept is synonymous with passions, uh, with passions uh, when um, the uh, when the opposing team defends well with a wait and see approach, approach since in, uh, in these conditions the positional play style leads you to not force anything until you have made maximum progression on the pitch. And it's by the sides that you have to do it, because that's where uh, there's space left. So it's often a um, uh, repetition of passes to uh, attract the opponent and thus regrouping on one side, before trying to play as directly um, as possible to the other, to take advantage of, of the shift, the sliding that the opposing players have to operate. It's indeed a delicate moment for them because they have to reorient themselves and sometimes even change the player or the players they are marking, so a gap can be found. Or, also possible, the opponents uh, can feel in shaker in, in this kind of situation, uh, so that their first reflex uh, can be to drop back, which means uh, progression uh, can be made. But if you, even if, this, if it's mainly this kind of circuit that uh, low blocks allow, the players must not forget to always look far away for uh, first to see if there's a better passing possibility, because 
Knowing how to be pa patient with uh, the ball doesn't mean you can't recognize and, and be able to um, to go directly to the code when when it's possible. Raising the head up to look far away was the, the reflex that Cruyff asked and that Guardiola asks of his players. But you have to know that even if we are talking about two of the most influential figures of positional play here, in my opinion, we have to nuance uh, the play of their teams and even their country's teams, uh, the one of their country's teams, be uh, which are sometimes automatically defined as positional play. Indeed, I think it's better to see positional play as an ideal, uh, with teams that, like in a fuel gouger, come more or less close to it by using the, these concepts uh, correctly uh, at a certain uh, freq frequency. Because if we look at uh, the image of Guardiola's City again, we see that, uh, for example, Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne, two players known for their intelligence, uh, uh, and are surprisingly, surprisingly not well positioned. The Portuguese is too far away to pose a, a dilemma for, for the defender, so he can follow Gundogan, who's, uh, who's dropping back, while the Belgian uh, should occupy the half space, given that Mahrez is already on the flank. And after that, uh, being well oriented uh, and in the right place is only the first step because you have to be able to take the necessary information from the game to, to decide and, and play correctly then. One concept that stems from this concern for the right orientation, for example, is the fact of speaking, communicating through the pass. To someone who's oriented uh, sideways in order to go forward, you want to give him the ball on his back foot. But if we see that an opponent is coming, We'll give it to him on the other foot so that he doesn't lose it. And as time goes by, the players will be able to interpret this as a signal. Well, as, I think that's all uh, I can say about positional play uh, so far without mentioning the theoretical elements of, say, rule law, so, um, to, to which I, I'll surely devote a, a video one day. And I also uh, intend to go more in-depth in other video with some of the concepts I, I mentioned uh, today, including how to train them with um, the Rondo also deserving one, but I won't say any more. Um, I won't say more. You simply have to subscribe if you if you don't want to miss all that. And new tactical analysis of teams, players and matches are coming, so I, I hope it can interest you as well. Bye-bye!